Hi guys, my name is Nicolette Mashile. I am also known as The Financial Bunny. Welcome to The Financial Bunny TV. Today we're talking about one of my favorite money rules. When it comes to managing your money, it is so important to understand the rules. I just want to just put you in a picture of why it's so whack to play any game with somebody that does not understand money rules. Have you ever played 30 seconds? with somebody who doesn't understand 30 seconds and literally this person is in your team right and now it's your turn so okay let's say you guys are four four in each team and now it's this team member's turn to go in front and pick up the card and describe these identifiers to you and you guys need to guess them right so first and foremost you know they don't understand the rules because they've got no sense of urgency they are slacking they walk slowly towards the card they get there they don't know whether to take from the in or from the out they don't know whether to read from the blue or from the yellow and then they just pick a card eventually you know you're screaming at this person just pick a card and they pick a card and they flip it over and then they look at the card and you know the moment they look at the card if you're playing with a very competitive team the other team already flips over that uh, uh, timer right and it starts counting down that hourglass starts counting down and this person in your team is so relaxed they turn around they look at the card they go Ish. yo you know this one i know this one and you're like okay try say anything just start explaining is it two words is it one word anything and this person has no sense of urgency and that is somebody that understands nothing about the game of 30 seconds you don't want to find yourself being somebody who's also very very blasé about money because when you don't understand the rules of money that's when you start losing so this is why i want to position this as one of my number one rules you may have your own but this is one of my number one rules of course i've discussed you know don't spend more than you make before today i want to discuss one of my other number ones right and that is pay yourself first this has to be the most confusing concept that i've ever ever positioned and for, mind you i did a couple of uh, industrial theater uh, sessions where we're going out into shopping centers with one of the big assurance companies right and one of the biggest lessons was pay yourself first and we used the lion to demonstrate this we said when a lion hunts a lion will hunt it will eat first when it has hunted and then only after it eats it will leave the carcass to the rest of its family members right but it would have been fed and and that is how we try to demonstrate this concept of paying yourself first even though we put it that way people still believe paying yourself first is going out there and making yourself happy and buying all of your luxuries and doing all sorts of things and we, are, we keep saying no it is not paying yourself first means that you after the SARS or after the tax man rather has gotten their money from you you need to be the next person that actually gets paid and how do you get paid you get paid by putting money away for the future or for future use or for emergencies or for future growth because remember the whole goal of saving or investing one it's either to preserve the value of your money so that on the day that you need it in the near future you have access to money that still is as valuable as the day you actually put it away remember you've got to account for today's value of money and the future value of money and the only way to do that is to make sure that you're putting the money in an interest bearing account that is going to beat inflation right so that's step number one the next step is you either want to be able to use that money in emergencies because we don't know when emergencies happen and you don't want to find yourself having to go into debt to be able to pay for those emergencies and the third thing is you want your money to actually grow so you then tie it up into assets or asset classes where that money is going to grow based on the value of appreciation of the asset that you are buying so when you turn it back into money you actually get, get or derive more money than you do when you actually bought that asset that's basically what we want you to do when we're saying pay yourself first so that today's uh, aspirations can become tomorrow's dreams and tomorrow's reality or rather today's dreams can become tomorrow's reality we want you to secure your financial future today I have figured out that the reason why it gets very confusing for people to understand this concept of pay yourself first is because many of us, the majority of us, of Christian belief have always been told, Buti, in the Bible it says that you must pay your debts at all times. Pay your debtors before you even spend on yourself. Now, there's a Bible verse, it's Psalms 37 verse 21, and it says that the wicked, uh, the wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous 
gives generously. Now, my interpretation of that Bible verse is that there are people who don't want to repay back their debts, right? However, the righteous, they will always give generously. And that giving generously needs to start with yourself. Yes, you must pay your debts, but you must give righteously and generously to yourself first. That is why the concept of paying yourself first is such an important concept to me personally. And that's how I, I just feel about it. Now, once you have understood this concept of paying yourself first, then we say to you, the only way you will be able to do this consistently without you going back into the same savings account and using that same money, because this is what people do, right? They'll, at the beginning of the month, I don't know who they're trying to make happy, whether it's trying to make Nicolette happy or th whether they're trying to wave off any guilt. What they'll do is they'll channel this big chunk of money, like 5,000 right into their savings account, but it's not realistic because halfway into the month, they're going back into the same savings account and they're going to dig up that money and use it in the month. Now, all you've done is really just put money in a savings account and taking it out in the same month. It really just makes no sense. But the only way you're going to be able to do that is to deal with a thing called a money dial what is your money dial and it's important to understand this right and i think i might not have said it i'm going to say it right here remember that none of my videos constitute as financial advice if you are looking for financial advice please speak to somebody that is certified and registered with the fsca so one of my favorite financial bloggers his name is ramit sethi and he's got a blog that is called i will teach you how to become rich and he has coined this concept of money dials he basically says all of us we all have that one thing that really, really satisfies us. And we are willing to put money into it guilt-free. And we will justify buying, buying that thing or paying that amount of money for that specific thing until we die. For some people, it's travel and leisure. For some people, it's luxuries. For some people, it's handbags. For some people, it's cars. For some people, it's property. For some people, it's when they travel. They don't want to compromise on the hotel that they're living. Some people don't want to compromise on how they travel. For some people, it's cars. For some people, it's education. For some people, it's actually investments and savings. For some people, it's property. Depending on where you are in life, your money dials may also potentially change. So, Think about it this way. Here's an activity. The first, if you were to get a cash windfall right now, what are some of the first three things that you will buy? And I call that your three, top three money dials. And they are so important because once you have satisfied those money dials, generally it means that you are not going to be putting money into things that really do not give you the full satisfaction that you are looking for. The problem is that many of us don't make provisions for money dials on our budget and that's what throws us off the reality is you've got to satisfy yourself to a level that is going to be beneficial for your money management skills because if you are not satisfied you are forever going to have this idea that it's my money i can do whatever i want with my money but the thing is you may be missing the key points you know have you ever eaten a meal let's say you are hungry and there's a specific meal that you want let's say maybe you want um that uh, salmon from jameli ne? or you want a McDonald's burger, you know, a, a, a king, or, 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 or you want a King Steer burger. Is it King Steer burger? I don't even know what these burgers are called. I mean, right, you know, honestly speaking. And, and let's say the town that you're in doesn't have a steers, but you want a King Steer burger. And then you find another place that sells burgers and you buy a burger because in your head, you think you need a burger, but what you don't realize is you need a King Steer burger, right? And then you eat this burger and you are full you're okay to carry on, but you know that something, something is off. You've missed the mark, you know. You've missed that one spot, you know. That little spot, you've missed it. You could not hit that spot. And that's basically what money dials are about. It's about making sure that you are hitting those spots when it comes to your finances and managing your finances every single month so that you don't find yourself bleeding money into activities that you actually don't find satisfying. So what are your money dials? It's important to identify your money dials. And I've written a couple of money dials on the board here, right? For some people, it's food. For some people, it's investing and saving. For some people, it's sneakers, cars, travel and holidays, education, handbags and fashion. I found, I find that as I'm getting older, 
branded stuff is now my new money dial. Like, I feel happy if I can just buy myself like a Gucci bag, Gucci sunglasses, Louis Vuitton, Dior, Prada. And I know I'm going to get over it because I get over these kind of things very quickly. But that's currently where I am. And I'm not going to feel guilty about it because I'm like, listen, this is where I am now. I am in that space. My second money dial is definitely, definitely property. Like, I will I will buy a property for 50000 if I can find it. I will buy property in all shapes and all forms, right? I will buy land. I'll buy rural land. I will just buy and keep it and wait because property is my second money dial. And I think for me, the third money dial is probably... Please don't laugh at me. My third money dial is definitely food. Guys, when I'm eating, I'm already thinking, what is the next thing that I can eat? I spend so much money on food and I don't mind. I don't mind paying for a chef. I don't mind buying Uber Eats. I don't mind buying groceries. I love food so much that it's my biggest money dial. And when I've eaten, I am okay with not going out. I am okay with not, you know, having the car of my dreams. As long as I've got my food, I am a happy person. So that is my money dial, right? And it's very important to understand these things because once you understand it, it will help you in terms of your money management.